Hi, my name is Connor Murphy, and I'm a data scientist at Databricks. In this video series, we'll be walking through an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline using Apache Spark. And we'll be doing this on Databricks, a unified analytics platform that enables data science and data engineering teams to run all analytics in one place, from ETL to model training and inference at scale. In the rest of this video, we'll be walking through machine learning at a high level, then we'll be walking through why we might want to use Spark for machine learning, and finally, we'll get started on Spark. So we'll get started in a Databricks environment, start a cluster, and run a little bit of code. Let's start with what is machine learning. At a very high level, machine learning just refers to an ensemble of different tools that we use in order to learn something from our data. And so under the hood, we're using a lot of calculus and linear algebra. But at the end of the day, machine learning allows us to take a step beyond summary statistics and basic analytics and learn a lot more from our data and make that actionable as well. So more technically, machine learning learns from data without being explicitly programmed. So if we think about the history of engineering, we oftentimes associate coding with a number of different conditional if-else statements and a lot of hard-coded logic. What machine learning allows us to do is abstract away a lot of those difficulties and use calculus and linear algebra in order to fill in the gaps and learn from our data without coders having to conditionally write all of those statements. Use cases for machine learning run the gambit. They include fraud detection, where we might be detecting fraudulent users on a website. We can A-B test websites and figure out what is the optimal version to be showing our users. We can do natural language processing, where we use algorithms to understand natural language. We can do image recognition for self-driving cars. We can also do financial forecasting and even churn analysis, where we try and predict which customers are going to leave and when. Now, why would we want to use Spark for machine learning? There are a number of different reasons, but first and foremost, Spark comes into play when we need to scale. And so Spark solves the big data problem. By using a network cluster of machines rather than one single machine, we're able to operate on more data than can fit on any one computer. This allows us to scale theoretically infinitely up to the scale of gigabytes and even terabytes and petabytes worth of data. Generally speaking, the more data we can throw in our models, the better they perform. And so if you take a look at this graph, we see that as we add more and more data to a number of different models, they continue to perform better and better. And the x-axis is on a logarithmic scale. So even up to 1 billion words, we're still seeing an improvement in our models. So generally speaking, if I had to choose between a highly optimized model or more data, I would generally pick more data than finely tuning a model. So in addition to the question of scale, Spark works really well with a number of different pipelines. First and foremost, if you're already using Spark, whether that's for ETL, streaming, ad hoc analysis, or anything else, Spark Machine Learning is going to play really nicely with that framework. Additionally, Spark works well with sklearn, uh, TensorFlow, and Horovod, which provides distributed TensorFlow. Additionally, Spark works with a number of different languages, including Python, SQL, R, Scala, and Java. And so depending on the assets and knowledge base of your team members, each can be writing Spark code that executes on a distributed cluster of machines. Finally, Spark works for model training and production, so you can easily deploy the models that you train into production. So let's get started on Spark. First, what we're going to do is we're going to sign into Databricks, and we're going to import the notebooks that we need. So now that I'm into Databricks, I'm going to go ahead and click on Home in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And on this drop-down menu, I'm going to click Import. Here, I'm going to import from a URL. I'm going to include this link in the description. And here, I'm going to import a DBC file, which is just a zipped version of a bunch of different Databricks notebooks. And so here, if I go into the machine learning folder and then click Machine Learning, you can follow along with all of the work that I'm doing. The other thing I need in order to get started is some sort of cluster to be running this computation. So on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to go ahead and click on Clusters. And I'm going to click on Create Cluster. You can give your cluster a name. I'm going to go ahead and call this my first cluster. You can pick your Databricks runtime version. 4.3 should be just fine, but you can pick whatever the latest version is. You can also change your Scala version here as well. And Python 2 is fine. This code will work just fine in Python 3 as well. Now go ahead and click on Create Cluster. So that's going to take a few moments to spin up. And so in the meantime, I'm going to navigate back to my notebook. Now that I'm back in the notebook, 
In the upper left-hand corner of the screen, I'm going to go ahead and click Detached, and I'm going to choose my cluster. And we can see by this icon on the left that it's still spinning up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down. And I can make new cells by clicking this plus sign. And so first, let's go ahead and get started with Python. So I can add this percent Python if I want, but this notebook is by default Python, so I don't necessarily need that. And so here I can execute arbitrary Python code. So I'm just going to say x is equal to 3. I'm going to go ahead and print that out. Now, with Control Enter, it's going to execute that code. And now we see that we're writing Python code. I could just as easily do this in Scala. So I can use the percent Scala sign. Then I'll say val x is equal to 3. And I'll go ahead and print that out as well. And now you can see the same. And finally, I could do the same thing with an R or SQL as well. And now to use the Spark API, I can go ahead and create a new data frame. Let's call it df. And the easiest way to create a new data frame in Spark is to use the range function. So let's just call it spark.range of 10. So now I have this data frame df, and I can use the built-in Databricks function display in order to print it out. So now we can see we have our first data frame in Spark. So now we have our Spark code up and running in our Databricks environment. In the following videos, we'll walk through exploratory analysis, featureization, the actual model training, and then we'll go ahead and save our model and our predictions. Thanks for watching.